Okay. Um, welcome to the podcast and the YouTube channel of Friends I'm No Longer Friends With. I'm Cheryl, and I am here with Perdita Finn today, who is um, the co-founder with her husband, Clark Strand, of the international fellowship, The Way of the Rose. There's also a book by the same title. I highly recommend the book. It, it changed my life. She is also the author of the forthcoming Take Back the Magic book, which will come out in 2023 by um, published by Running Press. She teaches popular workshops about getting to know the dead and collaborating with the ancestors. So um, if you're interested in looking at, at the workshops, at looking at The Way of the Rose, I'll have it all in the show notes. Um, and this week, the reason why I have Perdita here, I mean, I, why don't I have, I have Perdita here all the time? That's the, my question. But the reason why I have her here this week is because we have an episode about uh, a true story of someone who lost a friend through death. And I'd love to talk to Perdita about your thoughts about losing friends or people through death, through death. And well, I, I mean, I can talk about losing anyone through death. And I think one of the hard parts in our the modern world we live in is that we live in a world, a very merciless world that imagines we only have one chance to get it right. We only have one life to get it right. And that is very, very harsh. And so people die and we say, oh, they live in your memory. And I don't know about you, Cheryl, but my memory is not a very reliable place to live. <laughs> <laughs> can be, it depends, yeah, yeah, can be. So, <clears throat> but what if the dead really live? Yeah. What if relationships aren't over? What if, what if we have an ongoing relationship, a different relationship that when somebody dies, yes, we, we, we lose the embodiment of someone we love. And I don't wanna dismiss embodiment and the power of it, I, what I wouldn't do to hug my mother again, but do we lose the relationship? And I don't believe we do. In fact, one of the things I teach people is that if anything, friends on this side of the veil are even better friends on the other side of the veil. Friends and people that we've had complicated relationships with on this side of the veil often can be tremendous resources for us on the other because what happens when we die we don't lose our personalities fascinatingly mm -hmm. but we do shift our perspectives mm -hmm. and the dead are not trapped inside of that merciless harsh fantasy of only one life to get it right mm -hmm. they know there's all the time in the world for life and love and healing mm -hmm. i love this so 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 i'm I'm on board with this. I mean, this is, I mean, I've known, I've felt the same way about time as you do. For someone who doesn't look at time that way, what, what do you feel really has told you that that is, that is a truth? Well, the workshops I teach are helping people access that truth for themselves and, and how to really tap into it. What would, this was once a ubiquitous knowledge for peoples all over the world. In fact, it's sort of the bedrock of what we would call indigenous or archaic wisdom, right? That if we look at the natural world, we see cycles of change and return. The moon waxes and wanes, the seasons come and go, the flowers bloom and die and return, that, that this ceaseless cycle of birth, death, change and rebirth is a cycle of all of nature, it's the water cycle. Water rises, it falls, it goes to the ocean, it comes back, but it doesn't go anywhere. Sometimes it's snow, sometimes it's mist, but it doesn't go anywhere. And who's, and when we can tap into those cycles of deep time, our soul cycles of deep, oh, I hate to say the word soul cycle, but the cycle, <laughs> I'm sorry. I hate what they, but, if we, but, but if we can tap into what I call the long story of our souls, mm. there's enough time for everything. We, all our prayers are answered in that long story, but they're not, it's very hard to make sense of a life mm -hmm. in the short story. And so what can look like a tragedy mm -hmm. on one side of the veil may not be from the perspective of the long story. 
I can give you some examples of that if you want. Oh, gosh, please. I love it. Okay, good. Well, I have have a friend, you know, a psychic I'm friends with. She's a a remarkable woman. And I wrote a book with her called The Reluctant Psychic. And I said, I said, she was sort of, I guess it was an initiation working with her because as a little girl, she had to train herself to tell the living and the dead apart. And it was so intense for her. And in the beginning, she didn't know what to do with this kind of information that she was experiencing. And her parents were terrified of her. I mean, terrified, because she knew everything. They had no (laughs) secrets. She knew, and so it was this little tiny girl, and they had a lot, her parents had a lot of secrets, and she knew them all, and they were scared of her. So that meant they were very, very unkind to her. And she was very isolated. And it also meant that the nuns at the school where she went were very frightened and unkind to her and the other children were. And she said, she said sometimes she grew up as kind of, you know, a racehorse that she was so isolated that the only companionship she had were the dead. Wow. Wow. But she remembered her past life. And in the life she had lived before this one, and she remembered it from the time she was born because she could remember the sound of what she called the doodle bugs, which turned out to be the bombs that were dropped on London during the Blitz. And she could remember being a little girl dying during the Blitz, like a four or five year old girl. And she could remember lying under the rubble and a soldier coming and looking at her body and her looking down at her own body and realizing her life was over. And it seems like the most tragic of lives and deaths, this little child killed in a bomb. But she said, in that life, she never frightened her parents and she could remember their love of her. And four years of love from those parents sustained her through a lifetime of lovelessness in this life. That's remarkable. That's, I mean, that's, that's where, well, that's where I go. I appreciate that she has the memory of that and that she could pull that up. And what a gift. Wow. Well, wow. Okay. So and I would just say for your podcast, these great friendships we have, hmm. they're not over. I mean, we all have this experience, right? And even people who are listening to this and say, oh my goodness, she's so full of hoo-ha. <laughs> We all had the experience of meeting someone and instantly knowing who they are. Mm-hmm. Oh, we've met before. Mm-hmm. Oh, this isn't the first time we've done this. Mm-hmm. We, and we, we have a lot of ways of explaining away that feeling, but it's simply that we have met before. Mm-hmm. We have been friends before. Mm-hmm. Great friendships. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a past time. It's true. I believe, I believe, I believe that I can feel that. And I mean, this- I feel pod- it with you. Yeah, I, well, God, when, when we met in person, I was like, ah! you know? no. it was crazy right. and, and electric and just like, okay, it's on. And I mean, this podcast wouldn't exist without having taken the workshops. The dead brought me this idea of creating this podcast so i'm the the dead are are quite alive in my life i'm quite alive and um i just if you're thinking of taking a class with perdita i say jump go do it it's it, it's it's it makes life magical um because i think ah taking the story of your psychic friend that what has been able to heal me, I think, going through these stories of of so many women's and other genders losses, losses, that is that the heartache continues, but they're going to continue to work through it. And there'll be another time to work through it. And that it's given me an acceptance of an okay, okay, this is where it is for now. This is where it is for now. And, and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens next. And and there's enough time there's all the time in the world to heal these wounds Mm -hmm. and sometimes we come in and we're healing you know maybe we heal them with a friend we meet in first grade and then we're done with it you know the other thing i sometimes think is that we have 
work we need to finish up with people and we finish it up and then somehow the relationship is over mm. and maybe we don't have to feel so bad about that yeah yes <laughs> yeah yeah had some of those right yeah. i have had many of those and i appreciate those that it... bye yeah great well um just for time's sake any any last thoughts before we we say see well, i would just i would just say that our modern world has taught us for centuries you know people were murdered for talking to the dead 500 years ago. And in the modern world, we're not murdered for talking to the dead, we're mocked. And, and we, but I would say that one of the most radical things we can do is make friends with the dead because the dead want to be our friends, all the dead. I'm not just talking about your grandparents or your relatives or your lineage back to some country you've never been to. I'm talking about all the dead who've ever been from the beginning of time. They've done it all. They've seen it all. They've lived through stuff we can't even imagine. And they want to be our friends, all of them. And that's what I want to teach people is that there's this possibility for intimacy and friendship with the dead. That We don't need to fear them. We don't need to be scared of them. We don't even need to be scared of our own desire for those relationships, mm -hmm. that they can create extraordinary magic and confidence within us that like any friendship, it can help us become who we really are. I feel the dead are singing. The dead are <laughs> singing right now. So that is fabulous. Thank you so much, Fragita. Thank um, you. Uh, more to come. <laughs> more to come.